In this video, we will cover what you need to know about the new AuthPoint authentication policies. This video is intended to help existing AuthPoint users understand recent changes, but new users will also find some of this information helpful. We will look at a couple related new features in AuthPoint, how your existing settings will be converted, and recommendations for how to create and use authentication policies going forward. Let's get started. Up until now, you configured access policies within each AuthPoint group, which defined how your users log into the resources. We have taken the access policies out of the AuthPoint groups and turned them into authentication policies. Authentication policies enable you to manage the authentication requirements for all of your users, groups, and resources in one place. This simplifies the process of managing access to resources and gives you more options to control that access. Authentication policies also enable users in AuthPoint to be members of more than one group at a time. So what does this mean for your AuthPoint account and all of the access policies that have already been configured? All of your existing access policies have been automatically converted to authentication policies. These authentication policies will enable users to continue to authenticate to your environment just like they did with the access policies. Let's take a closer look at how this works. Here I am on the WatchGuard Cloud dashboard. I'll navigate to Configure at the top, then select Off Point. This account is still using access policies, so I will navigate to Groups on the left, and you can see I have three groups set up. If we look at Group A, you can see that this group has several access policies that require multi-factor authentication, or MFA, for my resources. At the bottom, you can also see that a safe location has been configured for this group. The other two groups in this account also have access policies configured with different requirements. Now, let's see what happens after migrating to authentication policies. You can see that there are two new items in the navigation menu on the left, one for authentication policies, and one for policy objects. If I edit group A again, the only settings available now are the group name and description. The access policies are now the authentication policies, and the safe locations are now network location policy objects. As part of the new authentication policy structure, you can now use your LDAP security groups directly within AuthPoint. This works for Azure AD as well. I clicked the external identities link on the left and I'll open the menu for my Active Directory server on the right and view my group syncs. When I select an existing group sync, you can see that there is a new option to synchronize the LDAP groups with AuthPoint. To see this feature, you must update your AuthPoint gateway to version 6.1.0 or higher. When you enable this option, all of the LDAP groups you have selected in the group sync will be added as groups in AuthPoint when the LDAP sync runs. You can see that I'm syncing group 200 from Active Directory into AuthPoint. If I navigate to the groups page again, you can see that group 200 is listed as an LDAP group in AuthPoint. This means I can now use group 200 in my authentication policies in place of or alongside an AuthPoint group. Once you have added your LDAP groups to your AuthPoint environment, we recommend using LDAP groups instead of AuthPoint groups when creating authentication policies. If we take a quick look at the users page, you can see that my users can now belong to multiple groups and AuthPoint records the LDAP security groups for any users that are imported from Active Directory. Before we look at the authentication policies, let's take a look at the policy objects by clicking the link on the left. Currently, there is only one kind of policy object that we can configure, network locations, which were previously called safe locations. The safe location that was configured in Group A has been automatically added as a network location in my account. If I edit this policy object, we can see that just like safe locations, network locations define a location based on IP addresses. This enables you to create policies that only apply when users authenticate from this location. The IP address can be either a host or network address and can use either a public or private IP range. In the future, we plan to add more types of policy objects 
to enable you to create more complex authentication policies. Now let's take a look at the new authentication policies by clicking the link on the left. When you first load this page, you will see a list of policies with generic names. These are the policies that have been automatically created for you to preserve the authentication requirements that you had defined in your access policies. Depending on how large your off point deployment is, this list of authentication policies could be very long. But don't worry, nothing has changed for the users, so you can take your time to determine how best to move forward for your environment. Looking at the policy list, we can see that it is broken down by policy order, policy name, the groups and resources the policy applies to, any policy objects in use, and the authentication options that users are required to provide. At the top, you have options to add new policies and to organize the list using filters or searches. All of the authentication policies that are automatically created for you will only use a single group resource and policy object. The reason for this is so that none of the policies interfere with each other. However, with authentication policies, you can now create a single policy that applies to multiple groups and resources. This enables you to simplify your access requirements into fewer policies so they are easier to manage. It also enables you to create more granular options for handling user authentication. One important aspect of authentication policies is they are listed in their order of operation, just like a list of firewall or access control policies for networking. This means that if you have multiple authentication policies a user could potentially use, the highest policy in the list that matches the conditions of the authentication will be used for that authentication. If no policies match, then the authentication will be denied. Previously, we saw that a safe location was configured for Group A. This meant that any users in Group A authenticating from that location will only require their password to authenticate regardless of the access policy settings. At the top of my authentication policy list, we can see the authentication policies that were created for me based on my access policies from Group A. Since I had used a safe location, two authentication policies have been created for each resource. A policy with the network location that only requires a password, and below it, a policy without the network location that requires MFA. The policy with the network location is placed above the other policy so that when users connect from that location, they will match that first policy and only require a password to authenticate. Users outside of the network location will only match the second policy and must use MFA. As you begin to consider how to consolidate your authentication policies, you must keep the policy order in mind. There are two ways to reorder policies in the list. You can either drag and drop them with your mouse, or you can edit the policy number. You could continue to use the generic policies that have been created for you, but by creating new policies, you can take full advantage of the new options available. When creating new policies, we have the following four recommendations. First, use filters to narrow down your selections and simplify managing the list of policies. Second, Create at least one catch-all policy for each of your off-point resources to define the authentication requirements for the majority of users that access those resources. Third, create policies for any exceptions. This includes allowing specific groups to authenticate with only a password, denying access to specific groups, or using network locations to define different access requirements based on where the authentication is coming from. Fourth, reorder your policies to make sure that the exceptions are above the catch-all policies and remove the generic policies that were created for you as you replace them. So before I start creating new policies, I want to understand what policies are already in place. I'll open the filter at the top and choose from my off-point resources. I'll start with my SAML resource by selecting it from the list and applying the filter. In this case, you can see Group A, B, and C all have access to this resource. Group A can bypass MFA when they are authenticating from the headquarters, and Group C can always authenticate 
with just a password. Now I will go ahead and create new policies to handle the SAML logons. I'll click Add Policy at the top and then define settings for this policy. I will start by creating a catch-all policy for users using SAML. I will provide a name for the policy, then I will choose whether authentication is allowed or denied. Since authentication is allowed, I need to choose the requirements for how users authenticate. Just like with access policies, selecting password by itself will allow users to authenticate without MFA. If any of the other options are selected, push, QR code, or OTP, then MFA is required. I will require MFA using any method. If the authentication policy I am creating includes SAML authentication to Office 365, I might need to select the option to enable basic authentication as well. Then I will choose the groups and resources that this policy applies to. For the groups, I'll select all groups so this policy applies to everyone, and for the resources, I will select the SAML and IDP portal resources, since I want the same authentication requirements for both. I could add additional resources to this policy, or even select all resources, if I want to enforce the same authentication requirements for everything. I'll leave the policy objects blank and save this new policy. Now I need to create two more policies to handle the exceptions. Group C is allowed to authenticate to any resource without MFA, so I will create a policy that permits authentication with just a password and apply it to Group C. For the resources, I will select all resources so that I will only need a single policy for this exception. Since I can add my LDAP groups now, I want any users in Group 200 from Active Directory to bypass MFA as well, so I will also add that LDAP group to this policy then save it. When users from Group A are authenticating at the company headquarters, they are allowed to authenticate with just a password, but they must use MFA if authenticating from anywhere else. I already created a catch-all policy without a network location that requires Group A to authenticate with MFA. So when these users are not at the headquarters, they must provide a second factor of authentication. I will create another policy that permits authentication with just a password and apply it to Group A. I will select all resources again, so I only need one policy for this exception as well. Then I will add the network location for the headquarters so that this policy will only apply when the users in Group A are authenticating from that location. I will need to make sure this new policy is placed above the catch-all policy in the list so that it will be used when the conditions are met. Using authentication policies, you now have more options for how to apply your network locations. For example, say you only want to allow users to authenticate when they are at a specific location. Anywhere else should be denied. You would create a policy with a network location, but you would not create a second policy to handle the user authentications elsewhere. When they are not at the network location, authentications will be denied because there is no matching policy. Now that I have created my new policies, I will find them at the bottom of my policy list. Since I created my catch-all policy first, I will need to move it below the exception policies by dragging it down. This ensures the exceptions will take effect because they are higher in the policy list. Then I will filter for my SAML resource again and delete all of the generic policies for that resource since the policies I just created will handle user authentication in the same way. I will leave my new policies at the bottom of the list, so the rest of the generic policies above will continue to allow authentication for the users as expected until everything is in place. I have continued to review my resources one by one until I have completed this process and replaced all of the generic policies with my own. By using all users and all resources in my policies where appropriate, I end up with significantly less policies to manage when I am finished. The last thing I want to mention is RADIUS. As you may know, RADIUS authentication through AuthPoint only supports using either a push or the one-time password for MFA. However, in authentication policies, you can select all of the MFA options, even if a RADIUS resource is included. When RADIUS authentication is processed, 
If push is enabled in the policy that is used, a push will be sent to the user and OTPs will not be accepted. If push is not enabled, but OTP is, then the user must provide an OTP to authenticate along with their password. When Radius with MS Chat V2 is used, push is the only option that works, so it must be enabled for MFA. When enforcing MFA in policies with Radius resources, you must always have a valid MFA option for the Radius authentication selected, or the authentication will fail. In this video, we covered how your access policies have been converted to authentication policies. We looked at the new authentication policies, as well as other new features, such as policy objects, and the ability to import groups from LDAP and Azure Active Directory. We also provided some recommendations for you to consider as you create and manage your authentication policies going forward. Filter the list, create catch-all policies that most users will use, and then create exceptions as needed. Finally, reorder the list to ensure your policies are applied correctly. As always, please refer to the WatchGuard technical search and help documentation for more information.